Hi guys, Jeff off the grid and well welcome back and today we've got a busy uh, busy one for you We're gonna go check on the shelter I've got some new tools that I made to showcase and test out might make a fire crane over the fire pit and uh, Just have a great day in the woods and also showcasing for you the book that first got me introduced to bushcraft stay tuned Okay, I want to take a moment and uh, showcase for you one of my oldest bushcraft books dating back to 1972. This was the first book I ever saw in my father's bookcase in his study that I really uh, aspired to read. And this is called Bushcraft, A Serious Guide to Survival in Camping by Richard Graves. Now I do hope that this book is still in print, but unlike some of the other ones that I've seen on YouTube, I have never seen this one, so I thought I'd show it to you. Obviously the contents, very thorough, and it hits on all the major um, pieces to campcraft and uh, bushcraft on its own. So, it really goes through, as I said, all the different sections. I do want to just flip through this rather quickly. Um, and you can see the diagrams and the, uh, the vintage pictures of either skitters or bushcrafters in their day making and and using some of these products all different whipping and lashings um, various methods of, of climbing and how to do that I mean the last time I checked uh, and I haven't seen too many bushcrafters whip out a rope bridge uh, quite like that certainly in the duration of some of these YouTube videos I've seen different huts and and again pictures to to go along with that um various types of shelters swinging shelter how to uh, how to sew and thatch various roofs with different materials the concept of special knots and lashings as it relates to uh, joining different materials correct right and wrong ways of simply making uh, little stakes and forks uh, making the fire pit this is one right here that I'm actually going to build. Now if we can pan back, here's my fire and there's the tree that I'm going to use. And uh, this is going to work well to, to build this right off that tree over top of the fire. So that's going to be, that's going to be quite something. We're going to get that, get to that here today, hopefully. Uh, various other cooking uh, I mean some of this stuff we've even seen on the various uh, show us your steak challenge which is great but look at this hollow log as a ready-to-use oven I have not seen that done yet that'll be on the uh, the bucket list for here at the shelter I guess one day even talking about simple things about an egg being baked in the coals um, you know different ways of uh, Again, edible wilds, different foods from around the world, not just in North America. Uh, again, edible wilds and so on and so forth. A lot of uses of uh, purifying water. And again, talking about matches and, and proper methods to do that. Uh, flint and steel, magnifying glass, and so on. Building a fire. Again, further to that, all the different knots and different ways to anchor, some tracking, and really knowing the uh, the species that you are trying to uh, perhaps catch. Snares and traps. This book almost falls open right to this section. Many different snares and traps from, from common to a little more abstract. Uh, some of them quite 
quite uh, quite interesting but uh, all these are very very key to uh, sometimes survival in uh, certain obviously certain situations various box traps and nets I really liked how it took time to showcase more of the water-based traps and in setups which are is something that uh, we haven't seen too much of um, on, uh, on YouTube or uh, that I've seen talking about travel and gear and uh, obviously that fighter's really heating up now um, different talk discussions about the weather and how to watch and read the weather making various packs floats chairs there's the coracle we saw Mitch make one of those off uh, history channel alone and uh, birch bark basket making again quite quite brief but uh, to some point quite in depth as well uh, with some of these lost I mean these lost skills so bushcraft Richard Graves check it out hopefully uh, your local uh, bookstore or, or uh, somewhere online might carry that I do hope that there's uh, a new reprint because that again as I said was one of the best bushcraft books um, that I've seen hopefully I'll uh, have a chance to bring a new bushcraft book out each time I come out and showcase for you some of these uh, these classics and I really love the uh, the closing in this one this book is clear accurate and reliable for anyone who wishes to face nature on its own terms how what a classic line that is bushcraft gotta love it all right I love inspiration for a purpose so we've just taken our book this is the uh, bushcraft book and what we're seeing is something like like this and what I'd like to make is one of these kind of swinging gantry they call it where this pole here is going to be this tree and then we're going to have a swing branch out over top of our fire much like as advertised in the book here so I think that's what we're going to do we're going to go find some sticks and see what we could come up with to make our own swinging gantry let's go This one might have potential, so we're going to take it back with us and uh, see if we can make something work. It's dry poplar, so it might it might work for what we need. I'm not sure what parts we're going to need, so we're going to harvest. Got some options. Let's see what else we can find. I 
back and see what we can come up with. Be able to get away with something out here. Right here. Okay. So, that would be handy. Now we can either run a branch down to pivot off the ground or another one higher. So that I can pivot over the fire at different levels and then swing out of the way. Okay, here's my thinking. I think we're gonna, I think that's somewhere like that's gonna be our best bet. This can be a temporary support for now. Now we can do a, use a perfect way to start tying something off is using the Canadian jam knot. Start with an N and then draw it through like your Standard. Make sure slip your slip knot, knot is the, the long loose end over top of the uh, branch you're starting from. Tighten it down and as you bind this knot it will roll itself all the way back to the jam knot and from there very very sturdy and a good way to start some of your lashing. Okay, this is a, way, a good way of showing a temporary uh, billy can uh, or pot suspension outfit. This is a fork in the tree and we've just kind of lashed it to the uh, either side of the fork. So that's a really tight kind of bind on the tree. It won't slide up and down easily. Here's a support fork out in the middle and out, out over the fire is where we can, uh, well away from the flames, is where we can support and hang our uh, our, our kettle or our pot and uh, when not in use this can be pivoted out of the way out over the fire to serve or just to cool down either side of the fire pit but for now that's where it's going to sit and uh, that'll be a perfect spot to suspend a pot over top of the fire Okay, now that we have the suspension stick 
set up and, and stable, certainly can take a lot of weight. We, uh, I have seen various people carve sticks like this, but this particular notch is too small for this stick. So I'm just going to invert it like so, and I'm going to carve a point on the end of this, knock this fork off, and that'll sit right inside that groove, and then our pot will be suspended off the other end where that groove is. That can go in there and then your pot can pivot off that and if anything should tip your pot it's just going to keep it suspended if anyone wants to bonk the stick it just articulates in that pivot and then your pot can still instead of spilling can still be in suspension over top of your fire show and tell is not stopping today we've got uh, so much to share and, and uh, the day's getting on I want to share this new piece of uh, equipment just for some of you to keep your eyes out, out eyes out for it at your uh, local thrift shop. I don't know where it came from uh, originally. This is a, a zebra container, uh, all stainless steel, made in Thailand, but uh, stainless steel top and bottom, and fastening clasps that roll up and seal it shut. And this has been an absolute savior. Um, I was at uh, the Canadian Bushcraft uh, Axemanship course, and I tried it for the first time uh, at home. I had pre-sprayed pre it and with uh, some uh, kind of non-stick spray, and I put uh, my hash brown casserole in there. I have two of these, and the other one I had some my ribs. And today I've got my, uh, my hamburger, and we're going to open it up. There's leftovers from last night. Put the hamburger inside here. Seal it up. And with it sealed completely, you throw it right into the bed of coals and warm it up. Let's give it a try. Put it right on the bed of coals there and give it a couple of minutes. We can flip it right over because it's not a non-leak lid and there's no liquids in there. And that'll warm the other side. So let's uh, give it a few minutes and... Once we start hearing it sizzle, we'll flip it over. After a couple of minutes, I can hear it sizzling. I'll just flip it over. Okay, let's take it off and see what we got. Been on there three or four minutes. There you go. Reheated burger. Stainless steel container, top and bottom. Sealed up nicely. Throw it in the coals. And it's perfect. Perfect warmed up lunch in the outdoors. Who says you can't bring leftovers? Mmm. I'll take it. When you're out and about, check out your local thrift shop, garage sale. Oh, pardon me for eating. And try to find stainless steel containers that don't have a rubber ring or rubber gasket. These ones happen to be made by a company called Zebra. And, uh, it's ideal. Scrubs up, but what a great way to transport food. Liquids, uh, I don't know if it's uh, like a liquid proof, but transport goods that need to be reheated. You can certainly use the top as a plate. And the bottom uh, to reheat um, or melt water. Um, you can uh, use these glass to suspend it. 
you had a little piece of wire in your kit, a little piece of snare wire or, so, or uh, something to that effect, probably used a couple of sticks, you could melt water, use it as uh, a, you know, warm soup, even a deep uh, deep frying pan if you will. The lid is all, as, as well could be used to uh, uh, fry something up if you made a pair of uh, tongs for example just to hold the lid. That would certainly suffice to warm up something, perhaps cook an egg on in the morning. And many uses. Transport anything you want. But uh, I want to showcase that with you. Again, always watch at your local thrift store, thrift store for these uh, little uh, these little diamonds in the rough, little nuggets, little pieces of gear that can be used and have multi purposes. What a great find. So there you have it. Another pot hanger. It's able to swing. Suspension stick here. Another option is to tie another line here up higher on the tree and it'll really allow it to dangle, be able to be pivoted out of the way pretty easily. Quick flow pitch, stick our stick out of the way. Other fork sticks are really handy in the winter time by your fire, set up for uh, a drying rack for, uh, for mitts. There we go. And we'll take that stick in the way. You can easily raise or lower it. Now, it is going to slide on the tree slightly, so at whatever level we wish to have it, we just need enough string so it really binds on itself and cap it off with a couple of half hitches. And there we go. One quick release there if we need to. Get some of the string out of the way. There we go. Very, very secure. No longer needing this particular branch. This is secure. It's not going to slide up or down the tree with the rope binding on the bark. This can be swung out of the way either side. And in the event that you wanted to get it up out of the way, you could lift it up and tie it off. But that re really works well. I can feel it take really very stable taking the load. I no longer need this stick here. But we'll leave it here for now. We'll take some of the, uh, the pressure off the off the line while we're not here, and there we go. It'll be all set up for next time. There we go. Just like this, hang your pot off here. You can pull it off to the side, out of the heat, or right over the fire directly. We have enough line that if we need to lower it, we can release that flow pitch quite easily, and then drop it down closer to our fire. Said. I'll leave that up there like that just to take some tension off. We may use that for another purpose down the road. All right. Hey guys, Jeff Allen. Thank you so much for joining me today. We had a great day building the gantry suspension system over the fire. We talked about the Richard Graves bushcraft book. I hope you can find it to add to your library. We talked about the, uh, the option of making your own bushcraft tools. Spoon gouge, maga talking, uh, didn't take much, only a little bit of inspiration and uh, a little bit of know-how around the common, some common tools in your garage. Other than that, we talked about uh, the uh, Tinder pouch. is a, is a simple, quick build. You want to add that to your to your belt, and uh, it really serves its purpose to uh, carry anything from Tinder to edible wilds and have it right on your hip. We looked at those metal tins. If you can find a metal tin like that at the local. Uh, local thrift shop. It really works well to pack food and quickly throw it on the fire without worrying about burning and a uh, great way to reheat your lunch. Oh, it was a super busy day and, and I'm glad you came along. 
Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and share. The bell notification, thumbs up, all those things. Send me comments and Q&As if you have any. And until next time, it's Jeff Allen off the gridiron. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your outdoors. Bye for now.